Good morning to you. Look outside, is it snowing yet? No, but it's chilly. The leaves are coming down as the world turns. The seasons change within them if you live in a climate of seasons. Temperatures are up and down. I want to warm up my belly with some warm food. Do you ever look at ingredients? If you were to just eat this raw, like right now, it'd be disgusting. Then the alchemy, you, me, everyone here together will take all of these ingredients and by the end of it, make something that's delicious. Isn't that incredible? There's only what, nine numbers? Isn't there nine numbers? That's it, nine? And then there's a zero. And then you take the one and the zero and everything can be calculated. Every single calculation is from nine. Look into that. You'll see that making bolognese stuffed shells <laughs> is where you want to go. This is going to be a brand new recipe that I literally have never made before. I've made stuffed shells. Carol! We've all made Carol stuffed shells. They're great. <laughs> this is bolognese stuffed shells cooking something. Maddie Matheson. Do you like bolognese stuffed shells? Do you like bolognese stuffed shells? I'm gonna show you how to make them right now and it's gonna be ooey gooey. Every time I make fucking bolognese, I do the same shit because you know what? I like doing it this way. It's an easy way. We have two pounds, okay? We have two pounds of ground beef for that. I'm gonna put in three cloves of garlic, okay? Three large cloves of garlic. Just take my hand, smash it down. We all know how to peel fucking garlic. If you're learning how to peel garlic from me, you're fucked, I feel. So here we go. I'm gonna put in one carrot. Throw in the whole carrot, skin on. We got some onion, garlic, carrot. And we're just gonna, you know, we're gonna blend this all up, okay? This quickens the melt away. Cause you know, once again, I'm, I'm, I'm a speed person. I like speed, I like fast, I like it jacked up. We're gonna add half a cup of olive oil to start. We're gonna start our blender, blend it up. That's it. See, we're good to go. This is, I don't, who wants to cut up onions and carrots and all this shit? So I'm gonna put in another half cup of olive oil into my pot, medium high heat. We're gonna pour in our onion, garlic, and carrot into the oil. We're gonna bubble this up. Bubble it up, bubble it up. Bubble, 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 bubble. I'm gonna turn this up, can we get, is this even on? Is it even on? Is this on? Is anything on? Is that hot? Is this hot? I need this fucking hot. Was that off? <sighs> okay, so we're just looking to melt away our onion, our garlic. We're gonna take our beef. We're gonna mix that, there we go. And so you mix this up, okay? We're gonna mix this up, look at this. Oh yeah, this is the fucking good shit. And then we're gonna fucking turn this up high heat, we're gonna crank it, and then we're gonna reduce it. And then we're gonna add some milk, and then we're gonna reduce it, and then we're gonna reduce it, and 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 we're gonna make <laughs> sludge. In the comment section is like, where's sludge? Where's just a dash three? Yeah, I'd like to know too, okay? Is there a billionaire person out there? We don't even need a billionaire. Is there like a multi-millionaire out there that loves just a dash, that wants to just pay for it and make the craziest season of all time? Because sludge needs to live. Maybe this water will boil one day. I have no idea what's happening with this. This is insane to me. Every time you cook, every time you cook, it's like, what the fuck is going on? That's what I say. Oh look, this is maybe starting to boil now. Okay, this beef is getting to the point. See this? I'm gonna make a little well in the middle. A lot of hot oil down there, okay? I'm gonna just take, I want it a little spicy. So a pinch of pepperoncinis. We're gonna do, I don't know, two tablespoons of tomato paste. And we're just gonna work it into the well and just fry it up in that middle oil. And then we're gonna add tomato puree. Not a lot, just enough to give us, oh yeah. Little beef stock, but one cup of beef stock. This is gonna freak people out. I got a little Worcestershire, okay? One, two, three. 
This is gonna freak people the fuck out. Soy sauce. One, two, three. We got some fresh basil, plop it in. Fresh cracked pap, it'll be nice. Big pinch of salt. I got a block of parm, guess what? Take the rind off of it. This is gonna give it some funk. It's gonna give it some salt, gonna give it some love. Earthiness, beautiful. Little Parmesan rind, throw it in there. We've done the heavy work. We've set ourselves up for success. And then when, once we reduce this halfway, we're gonna add milk. Then we add the milk, then we we're gonna reduce that again. We got a little bit of bubbles here. So how many of these are gonna fill? Let's just see, we're gonna make a tray. So maybe four across, four across, four, eight, 16, 20, four. 32, 32 shells, okay? So we're just gonna plop them in some water. We're gonna park cook these. Have you ever seen Pan's Labyrinth? That's that. That's that. I'm a baby root underneath a bed. Let's do a couple little salts in there, okay? A couple salts in there. So we gotta cook these, a little park cook. Just get them soft. So we want to reduce this slowly, not crazy town. You don't want to fucking booble and bubble in a fucking everywhere. We're starting with a lot, a loose bolognese. And now we just reduce this. About takes an hour. This is the one hour bolognese. All right, hello, everybody. Guess what? Our shells are done. A little firm, a little soft. It's a half hard situation here. But we, we want to just cover this with a little oil so they don't get sticky. And we'll just give this a little push around. Let's see if it's, oh, I'm gonna push it around. That was good though, I tested it, I saw. The floor is cleaner than I thought. Our bolognese, look at this. We're getting to that consistency we're looking for. It's still a little loose. At this stage, I'm gonna take two ladles out to pour on the bottom underneath our little shells. We're gonna add one cup of milk Homogenized, 3.25. Ooh, yeah. That's the good stuff. We got one cup powdered Parmesan cheese. We got about a half a pound of butter. Throw that in there. We're just gonna stir this up. And you can turn the heat off. And look, and look. So let's try. So we got the two ladles of sauce we're gonna put just on the bottom. Hey, this is just a little, a little place to nestle our shells, okay? Okay, we got the fontina. I want a little hidden, a little, a little jewel of cheese in each shell. So what I'm gonna do is take literally one cube of fontina, put it in there. We're gonna take a tablespoon of our bolognese and then put it in. And this is hands-on, everybody. This is hand, we're hands-on over here. We're going four, four across. Four across. It's like a little shot glass. There's nothing like baked shells. People love baked shells. Everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people, you know? It's such an easy, fun, oh, it's so fun. I'm riding a roller coaster. An acid with a butt plug in, you know? That'll really fucking get you going. Now, what I want to do is we have the Fior de Latte. We're going to put like one shred on top of each one. And then last thing we're going to do, a little breadcrumb, like in and around, not even like on top. This is going to create some texture. It's going to soak up some fat. It's going to create crispy edges. This is really nice. Then fresh cracked pap. One little last salty. And then I'm just gonna do a little drizzler of olive oil. And here we go, look at that. This is the ultimate. This is like hamburger helper, kinda? In the oven, 350. I'm gonna clean up and when we come back, I'm gonna burn my fucking mouth all over these cheesy little fucking beef dumplings, okay? See ya soon. <laughs> they're not dumplings, they're shells. <laughs> minutes away. Minutes away, we're minutes away. 
little crispy, the breadcrumbs, the nooks, the little fats, the melty chiz. It's almost there. We're minutes away. We're really getting there, guys. We're minutes away. This is exciting stuff. We're minutes away. Minutes away. Still not golden brown. I'm looking for that perfect golden brown. This isn't like lasagna, those burnt edges. Cause it's once again, it's just like a loose meat sauce underneath the breadcrumbs, the filled shells. Oh, it smells so good. Fuck. It's not ready yet. Minutes away. Patience is a virtue. It's not just given. It's never just given, it's earned. You have to understand how to just sit with yourself and think. I think we're there. Shall I pull it out? Do you wanna see how my biscuits are baking? <laughs> Landscape of love. Crispy, perfect meat shells. Fontina, Fior de Latte, crispy breadcrumbs. So this is exactly what I was talking about here. Watch this, look at this. Oh my God, look. That golden hue, picking up all that fat. Look at this, this is beautiful. This is literally like oysters in Rockefeller. Okay, let me try to, oh yeah, here we go. Look at this, look at the inside. Still not that cold. This is so fire. This isn't drowned in tomato sauce, okay? This is nice brown, sludgy bolognese. Mmm. Get you laid lasagna? This is gonna get you married, 16 kids, divorced, lose half of it, living out of a truck, but still come scratching at the window for that weekend sex. You go on with your lives, happy, but you still come scratching back at that window for that real hate fucking, you know? That's what this shit is. I fucking hate you. I fucking hate you, but I wanna fucking, mm. That's this shit right here. Oh. It's way too hot to do that. One of the greatest things I've ever made in my life. You're welcome. Hello, everybody! Home Stock Was I'm not even picking up this book, because this story is real. A lot of those stories, I don't even know if they're real anymore. There's a fibber. I'm a bit of a fibber sometimes. But about the tuna casserole begins with my first friend in Fort Erie, Cliff. I, I, I just moved across the country from, from Nova Scotia to Ontario. I went down with my basketball. Across the street was an elementary school. Just was like, hey, can I play? Two kids. I was 11, he was 11. And we started playing basketball. And from there, I was like, hey, I'm gonna go. I got my new best friend. I was so excited. We go home and his family was amazing. First of all, it was crazy because it was the first time I think I ever heard a British accent. His parents were British. It was like, I couldn't even understand. It was like, what was happening? The first time I ever going over to their house, they had a baked tuna casserole. The first time I ever had tuna casserole, I was in love. It was a baked macro, cheesy macaroni with little pockets of canned tuna. And it was fucking incredible, okay? Tuna, macaroni, cheese, casserole, whatever the fuck you want to say, it gets a bad fucking rap. No more. So, first things first, let's make a row, everybody! Wait, why am I starting? I'm starting with fucking flour. No, Maddie, shut up! We're gonna start with that amount of butter. What's that? One, two, two big tablespoons. Maybe we'll do a little more. Do like three tablespoons of butter. I'm not even following my recipe, okay? You guys can follow my recipe if you want. I don't want to. Melt your burr, little butter melt. And uh, you know, shout out to Stefano's good friends over here. This isn't even a fucking paid ad. I use this at home. I use their sauce. Nice people. 
There you go. Send the check if you want. But these are just my homies. So we're gonna add a bag of macaroni in the pot boiler. Water! A little salt? No problem. Give it a stir. Okay, calm down. Give it a stir. We're cooking macaroni. Give it a stir. We're cooking macaroni. Give it a stir. Cause you don't want your noodles. You don't want your noodles sticking to the bottom. There you go, full song. That's a full song for you guys. Now we're gonna add our flour. Three tablespoons of flour. Whisk this in, da 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 da. Cook this out, we're getting a blonde roux going here. I don't want a lot of deep color, just because we're making a Mornay sauce, but whatevs. Be very careful, this is very hot. Now we're gonna pour in some milk, whole milk. That looks like enough. What's that, like a cup? Cup and a half? So now that we added the milk, we gotta bring this up to a boil. Once it comes up to a boil, we will know the thickness of our roux. We're gonna add a little bit more milk. Let's get this up to a nice temperature. Then we're gonna turn it way down because we don't want to scorch it. We're gonna add in some flavoring agent. Gonna add in a big old tablespoon of yellow mustard. Goes a long way, I feel. And we stir that in. That's gonna go a long way with making a cheese sauce. So now I got some braided Monterey Jack. Let's whisk that in. Okay, cheesy, cheesy, cheesy. Old, old sharp cheddar. About, you know, a cup to two cups of each. Beautiful cheese sauce here. Let's watch our macarons. I gotta finish making my sauce, so the macaroni's here. We're cooking it al dente. Al dente, al dente -es. So our noodles are done. Look at this cheese sauce. Beautiful cheese sauce. I'm gonna add a cup of cream cheese as well. So we're gonna just let that melt in. We're gonna add five beautiful cheese slices, because this shit makes it all come together. So we just peel these and let these all melt in there. And if you don't want to add these and you want to be, you know, healthy or whatever you call it, you know, you do you. I think this is a great stabilizer. This makes sure that the cheese sauce stays, whatever's in this, whatever chemical or agent is in here, this makes the sauce real nice. We're just gonna whisk the cream cheese and the cheese slice. Oh. We're gonna add a touch of salt. There we go. What a nice Mornay. How, how, how easy is that? You got equal parts flour, butter, milk, add some cheese, Mornay sauce, cheese sauce. We got our pasta, we got our cheese sauce. Now I'm just literally gonna add just enough cheese, just a little bit by a little bit. And we're just gonna incorporate, oh yeah. I'm gonna add just a little more. This is such a beautiful, easy dish. This one's for you, Cliff. We got our cheese, and you want it to be just a little bit, like it may look a little like soupy. Because if you have it dry when it bakes, it's gonna absorb, a lot absorbs into the noodle, okay? So we got, uh, what's this, two cans of tuna? We got about two cans of tuna. So we let's just incorporate once again. I want little pockets of tuna. This is just like, we're making a little bit. So I'm putting in about three cans worth, okay? So the recipe calls for four cans. I'm adding about three. I just want little pockets of tuna, little pocket. Mm. I'm like a little alleyway kitty cat. That's how the kitty cats sound. I'm just gonna use my cast iron pan. Use a cast iron pan for casseroles, frying, whatever you want. So here we go. Oh, <laughs> look at that. I'm gonna cover it just in some breadcrumbs, some beautiful panko. Panko, a little spritz of oil on top. There we go. Little oil, I'm gonna just do a little salt on top. Boom, two-handed over the shoulder, boulder, holder! Can you even say that? Cast iron pan, put your boobs in this, or your man breasts, either or. Okay, <laughs> okay, I'm canceling that. Bye-bye, we're good to go. Put this into the oven. We got our tuna casserole pan, little panko, little olive oil on top, a little bit of salt. Going in the oven, preheated at five, how much? Preheated at 550 degrees, for some reason, we're gonna lower that to 400. I'm gonna do a little cleanup here. We got a tuna, beautiful macaroni cheese casserole coming to your face in a couple minutes. Keep your fucking dick in your pants and have a great day. We'll see you soon. I think it's ready. Babushka, this is what I'm talking about. I was just kind of blown away. I ate this casserole and it had like crispy breadcrumbs on it. Like I certainly never had like 
panko on anything, like nice breadcrumbs. I was just blown, and for some reason, I always remember it. So let's dig in here. Oof, look at that. This isn't like, this isn't pretty, but this is beautiful. That crispy panko with the creamy cheese sauce, that Mornay with the tuna. Let's try. Come on. This is the food that brings you back. You know, I'm just playing basketball with my best friend. No worries in the world. Riding BMXs, smoking cigarettes in the woods. You know, that's what it's all about. A little hot sauce. Just a little hot sauce. There's a fresh cracked pep. Here we go. Oh. Let's go! This is incredible. This, I'm so happy. This is so simple. Canned tuna, macaroni casserole. But look, like, look at this dish. You can make it in a cast iron pan. Did you get your Maddie Madison cast iron pan? <coughs> the panko! The panko almost got me, but no. I would never let the panko get me. You know what time it is. Home style cookery, it's Sunday. Make a tuna casserole, macaroni. I love you guys. I love everybody, except for the losers. You guys know the losers out there, eh? Fuck off to the losers. I love you guys, though. You know what time it is. Spaghetti carbonara! What are we doing today, Manny? We're making carbonara. Sometimes I went to this place and they had this carbonara for breakfast and it had a fried egg on it. And it was like the carbonara breakfast pasta. And I was like, this is good, but you know what would be great? If it had a super soft, ooey gooey omelet on top. And you know who makes the ooeyest, gooeyest omelets in the world? Japan. Lisa, what's it called? Uma rice? Omu retsu? Omu latsu? Omu In Japan, they got the omu rice. The thing in my thinking, we're gonna get a little fusion-y out here. So we're gonna have a creamy Japanese style omelet on top of the carbonara, and then I'm gonna slice it. It's gonna encoat the whole beautiful carbonara on top. And then as you eat it, you're eating the beautiful eggs. And this is gonna go either incredibly well or incredibly horrible, where I'm gonna get very frustrated. You know what happens when I get frustrated. You can see it in my body language. I'm gonna show you how to make two very basic things. Simple things. Simple is the hardest thing to do. There's nowhere to hide. The first thing we need to do is we have our guanciale. Guanciale is the jowl of a peg. I'm gonna cut it. And I'm gonna take the skin off. I'm gonna just kind of cut this into pieces and then we're gonna make kind of like lardon. Guanciale. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of olive oil to help it start. We're gonna render this out and then we really wanna get this to like really nice, crispy, beautiful pieces of guanciale. Guanciale is very similar to pancetta. Pancetta is the rolled pork belly, you know, like Italian bacon. This is just jowl. It's not more fatty or anything, it's just a different cut. So if you can only get pancetta, do pancetta. No one's gonna hold it against you. The next kind of thing that we do is we are gonna crack and get farm freshies. We're just separating the whites, we don't need them. If you wanna save them and be like, you know, Captain Kitchen, save your yolks for when you use them, sure, but these yolks are softies. So I got five egg yolks in here. I'm just gonna whisk these up. I would say like this is like two portions worth of uh, pasta. And then we're just gonna add some pecorino. Kind of like one tablespoon of cheese per yolk. Look at that color. Mm. And then I'm gonna add fresh cracked pepper. So I'm gonna add a little bit of pasta water, temper these egg yolks and cheese. Then I'm gonna pour that in with our pancetta and our noodles. And then if this doesn't work, I've disrespected two incredible countries. Japan, very respectful. Italy, psychopaths. This is coming from a place of love. We got two portions. We know how to measure, you know, a little Coxworth. Wait, we need to season our water. See, that's your big boy. That's your big boy. Madison Cookware, that's your big boy. This is Dees. You know, it's Dees. Put your pasta in the water. <laughs> Make sure it's long enough to like not go into the pot so then it cooks unevenly, but we're almost there. Look at this. Beautiful, golden, crunchy, 
Ah! Mmm, mmm. Oh, guanciale, salty. Pecorino, salty. I highly believe that I'm not gonna have to add any salt. Okay, I need to get some eggs ready for my omelet. So we're taking four eggs, crack them. Perfect. Okay, then we're gonna whisk these up. I'm gonna take a strainer, and I'm just gonna pour this through the strainer. You just kinda get those little connecting veins out and like whatever. And now we have this beautiful, 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 beautiful thing. Perfect, do something that somebody's been doing their whole life. I'm gonna try. Okay, so my thinking was that I was gonna do a slow thing, then I just watched a video where they do it fast. I understand what's happening. So we're gonna try to do it fast and we're gonna see if I can do it. So now what I'm gonna do, we got some really nice starchy seasoned water. I'm gonna take a little bit and then just stir it in with my egg yolks and my cheese. Cause you don't wanna make scrambled eggs, scrambled eggs, okay? We got our noodles. And I'm not worried about too much water getting in there right now cause water evaporates. So we wanna emulsify and kind of make a little bit of a sauce here. Just to begin, add one ladle of pasta water. Oh yeah, this is gonna be nice. You can see that fat in that pasta water has already emulsified. I'm gonna do one more ladle. Look at the color. That is all that fat in that pasta water, all that starch just naturally coming together. We're getting to a pivotal point here. We're turning on our pan. We're gonna start our omelet, okay? I'm gonna add our egg mixture and cheese mixture, okay? You can smell that pepper. Oh yeah. This is really nice. Okay, I'm gonna plate the carbonara. Woo. This is a really nice little pasta. And then we're going, here we go, to omelet town. Okay, I'm just gonna do a pinch of salt, okay? Okay, let me see. First time. Can't do it as fast as him, but I'm, you know. Okay, we're gonna start folding. He was putting it back and forth on the heat. I need some heat. It's not quite there. I think I could just still just fold. Oh. I don't think it's gonna explode like his. And then you gotta cut it right away. It doesn't explode. Does it look? There, it looks like it. First try. I got another pasta. I'll do it again. It didn't explode. Round two. Here we go, round two. Okay, carbonara, let's get it. Agitate, let it sit there. Agitate. This ain't it either. Now here's our third one. Final round. So I guess we have like three portions. This one's juicy. This is for all the cookies here. The big dog's got it. Stressful. Agitate, agitate, agitate. Let it form. Obviously, this is very difficult. Trying to get it with the skin and then that perfect ooze. <sighs> Fuck my life. I don't think this is gonna be it either. It doesn't do the pop open. This one's overcooked. I don't know how to do it. So you go watch other videos, but you know what? Did I fail three times? I didn't do exactly what I wanted, but if I'm at home trying to cook with my friends, that's okay. As we say in Canada, fuck my life. Well, my thinking was right. This is very nice. Anyone that can make the omaretsu better than me, I'm sure there's literally thousands of people that can do it better than me. I want to do that. Someone show me how to do it. Cause I know that there's that little flip thing at the back that I'm like, I just wasn't doing. My hands, I got scared. Obviously I got scared, but I'll tell you one thing. This is the right kind of thinking. You got a carbonara with a beautiful omelet on top. I just did something I never did before. Did I nail it 10 out of 10? No. Does this taste 10 out of 10 though? Yeah. Making omelets is very difficult. One of the most difficult things maybe in the world. And I just tried. You saw the chink in my armor. And that omelet shot an arrow right through it and killed me. But I'm here still. That's life. Never give up, especially on yourself. I'm sending everybody lots of love. You miss a hundred of the shots you don't take. Sweating like a goddamn wildebeest over here. I'm gonna go take a shower and I'll see you soon. <laughs>